Here we are over in Sheet Cam. Sheet Cam is easily my favorite. It is absolutely my favorite cam processor for anytime you do plasma cuts or anything like that. It works great. It's inexpensive. It's very simple. Everything you'd ever want it to be. So let's go ahead and bring in our image, our Zeppelin stomp pad. Here we go. It's a DXF file. Files in inches, that is true. We're, the origin is going to be the bottom left. You can change these as you bring them in. Points for drilling, we're just going to say OK. So it load in. Here it is, kind of up close. You'll notice all these different points around here. And those are the very same points that we had over in Illustrator, and this has broken it up as we came through Rhino. And when we see our G code later, you're just going to see each of these little points. Uh, it's going to tell the machine to go from this point to this point to this point to this point to this point and all the way around. Certain ones they're actually a curve that it'll tell it to do and then other ones it's uh, truly just an X and Y move that it'll do. So in sheet cam we just brought in our image. Uh, here's our tooling here. I really only use this for my plasma cutter and that's about it so let's bring it in. The layer is going to be the default layer. You see the layers here as well for sheet cam. Outside offset, uh, our tool, our feed rate, whatever you want that to be, leads in and leads out. So in plasma cutting, you usually don't start exactly on one of these lines. You do a lead in and a lead out. You can do that in an arc or tangent or perpendicular. It's your choice. Uh, we're just going to say OK. So here it is. You'll see a number of these, and we'll zoom in a little bit. We'll just start uh, back first. It's going to start out at 0, 0. It's going to move the machine. It's going to come in and do this interior cut. There's a start there. And then it'll go over and do this cut. And then it'll go over and do kind of this face cut. This one it will finish out the wing. Come down here. It'll do the leg and then pop back right here and do the entire perimeter of this. So whenever you're doing cam for plasma, you're going to want to do your interior cuts first. So the entire piece doesn't move around out on the table there. Do your interior cuts and then just do the final kind of all the way around um, perimeter cut. So there it is. You can change these uh, starting points. You know, here, let's just zoom in and take a look at one. This starting point looks pretty good. This one we may have trouble with because it's kind of right on a couple of curves. So in theory we could move that a little bit. Um, I guess in sheet cam how you do that you just you pick whatever your starting point is and then you can move it around between them or to different points. Uh, but it's pretty simple not too much to it. That's about what you want it to do. And then really you're going to have to post-process this file. If you're okay with where all these starts and stops are and the lead-ins and lead-outs, you're going to need to post-process that file. And I just have a post-processor set up. Here we go. And where do you want it to actually output? We'll put it in our project here. It can be a number of different files as well save that out and just produce that and kind of pop back over we'll take a look at it this tap file there it is there's our g code that's it here's the name of it the posting that we use zeppelin goes through these lines of G-code are just a X and Y movement, so it goes from X 4.6691 and Y 4.41 to this next one, to this next one, and it just kind of moves all the way through. When you see this, it's moving in an arcing fashion. This is where this I and J are coming into it, but it just rolls through. Uh, these are pauses. When you do plasma, you're going to want it to pause as it pierces through the material. And I put little pauses in there as well. It's part of my uh, post-processor. There's always tip-ups that have in, in plasma, and it just gives me a little bit of extra time to get those solved and moved if something if a piece of material does tip up. But here it is, it cuts out a piece and then uh, 
I guess you'll get to read more and more G code throughout your CNC uh, learning experience. But here's a stop. I can see this is a torch off, torch on. These are those interior cuts that we looked at. It goes through. Here it stops again as well and starts back into another one of those interior cuts. Goes through. Here it stops again, moves, restarts again for another interior cut. But you'll see as I move the slider down, there's just tons of this G-code as it goes down. Until we get to the bottom and the program's finished out. So there are 11,170, uh, I guess it counts in tens here, but you know, take 10 off that, 1,100 lines of code that this goes through to cut out that design. And that's really what we need to bring out to our CNC machine. That's what it needs. Um, it doesn't need any sort of CAM program. It really needs G-code to run off of. That's what control programs run off of. We just created it. And uh, our next step is to go out there and cut it out of aluminum and see what it looks like.